In the city of Lugano, you can now buy your Big Mac with crypto. And this month, McDonald's started accepting it as a form of payment with a joint initiative between the city and Tether. Joining me now is William Quigley, cryptocurrency and blockchain investor and co-founder of Wax and Tether. Welcome to the show, William. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, William. Glad to have you on. And uh, Tether and Logano, they have started a foundation called Plan B. Plan B. Uh, how did this partnership come together? Well, as you know, I am not uh, currently involved with Tether directly. I, uh, I was a co-founder of Tether. Uh, but what I assume has happened is uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of countries are beginning to understand that the absolute best crypto to use in a payments environment is a stable coin. And if you consider that Tether is the number one stable coin and the first stable coin in the world, it would make sense for them to use that stable coin. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when you talk about stable uh, coin payments and the use case of it, uh, the use at McDonald's is huge. A lot of people uh, definitely shop there. What are your thoughts on McDonald's being able to accept it and how consumers uh, will take to the new stable coin payment system? Well, here's what I'd say. Um, the ideal way to use crypto is probably for payments would probably be cross-border payments. And the reason for that, the costs are high. And you have the biggest expense, which is currency conversion costs. Now, if you're using it for local consumers, there's one other benefit. You don't really save much in terms of transaction fees because they're already pretty low in the credit card system. But you do avoid something called chargebacks. And a chargeback is when a credit card holder uh, doesn't pay their bill or reverses the charges. And that's particularly the case when there are fraudulent transactions. So in the case of a stolen credit card, which amounts to you know several hundred billion dollars a year globally. So it is an ideal way to avoid that kind of loss. Um, once crypto becomes easier to use, uh, it'll also be, uh, I think, uh, a convenience because you'll be able to tap into your crypto reserves as long as they're stable coins. Um, for most people, however, credit cards are easier today just because the user interface is so hard in crypto. Uh, and in the United States, anyway, um, crypto is considered property. So if you spend money by McDonald's hamburger with Bitcoin, you'd have to report that to the IRS, either as a capital gain or a capital loss, which is inconvenient. That's why stable coins are best, because they're just treated as money. Yes, and that is a huge industry to uh, penetrate as far as chargebacks because that helps businesses, uh, keeps costs low, and actually uh, ends up helping the consumer as well. So they don't have to you know, cover those uh, different costs. So that's always good to hear. And uh, what other companies uh, are you hearing are accepting stable coins uh, on the ground in Switzerland? Uh, in Switzerland, I don't know. I can say that it has... Uh, as businesses globally, U.S. in particular, uh, started to figure out that a lot of consumers held cryptocurrencies, their first thinking was, hey, we should tap into this as a payment method because people have to do something with their crypto rather other than just trade it. Uh, but I think the big uh, misunderstanding among businesses and crypto holders was that uh, this idea that crypto was easy to transmit and that you didn't need to account for it in your uh, in your tax filings. And this is why stable coins are without doubt the best way to go. Because with a stable coin, you are bypassing all the banking networks, all of the credit card networks. You're not paying fees to a multitude of entities that extract fees on those networks. You're on one blockchain. Uh, you can reconcile the payment uh, almost instantly, a few seconds unless there's a congestion on one of the chains like Ethereum. But many chains have very low of no cost, and they, uh, they can uh, settle a transaction in a few seconds. So um, uh, it's a much better way for businesses to operate. And as I mentioned, the biggest hurdle is just it's difficult to use. You know, most, most uh, consumers still aren't used to using cryptos for buying everyday, you know, everyday items. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And I, I mean, it took some people a while to get used to just digital payments with their bank. Right. So there is definitely a learning That's curve right. there. Uh, and, and I think we'll have to deal with that. But, uh, you know, technology comes very fast. And I want to speak a little bit about the climate around stable coins themselves, you know, with the recent uh, Terra USD stable coins sort of taking a, a fall recently. Uh, what do you say to someone who has doubts about the stable coin market and can this happen to other stable coins that they may use? Um, there's always risks with any new technology, so people should be cautious. However, what I would say is um, not all stable coins are, uh, are the same. In the case of, of uh, Terra Luna, that was the worst type of stable coin, not very stable. Of, uh, of the three types of stable coins, two are secured by, by uh, a sufficient amount of collateral to back them up, and one type is not. In the case of, uh, of, of Tether, uh, even of uh, Maker, Maker Die, these are stable coins that are secured either with dollars, uh, marketable securities, or in the case of Maker Die, with uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, or other crypto assets. Uh, the problem with Terra Luna was it was secured with a token that they themselves created. And any time they thought the collateral value was dropping, they would issue more of the token they were managing. But in doing so, that token ultimately had um, was completely debased. It had over, I think, six trillion tokens outstanding near the end. And so the key is that a stablecoin needs to be backed by an asset that the stablecoin issuer doesn't control. That way you have some, some safety that there's real collateral behind it. If the issuer of the stablecoin is also the one that's uh, creating and issuing the collateral, there's much greater risk. And, and that's the reason a tether or, or, or make or die are much safer than something like Terra Luna. I also would just say, I understand it's hard for the typical consumer or crypto person to really understand the distinction here. And that's why uh, there needs to be a lot more education on the part of the consumers about how different privately issued stable coins um, are backed. And uh, uh, that that's just gonna take additional time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for our viewers, let's let's give them a little bit of education here. You know, when people talk about the, uh, the reserves for stable coins, they may say, hey, there's only, you know, 50% of the cash value. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the reserves for the dollar, so to say, or for fiat currencies versus a stable coin and, and how that differs. Right, well, uh, by definition, you know, fiat is paper money. It's backed by the credit worthiness of the nation that issues it. So that might be its ability to tax its people and therefore um, stand behind whatever currency you have. Virtually, you know, all the major currencies of the world are now fiat. We moved off a, uh, a literal collateral backing them decades ago. Uh, in the case of something like Tether or USDC, the, uh, those tokens are backed by a fiat, one for one. And uh, in that way, you could say they're secured by something, but the underlying fiat itself it's just a matter of people's faith in that nation, in its laws, in its, uh, in its economy. And when people lose that faith, as you saw a little bit with uh, the pound sterling recently, when people believe that the government policy is not going to keep the economy uh, running smoothly, then they want to exit that currency. And uh, the currency, since it's fiat and backed by nothing, it can drop a lot. In the case of the pound sterling, that dropped, I think, almost 30% in a year. Uh, so even, even uh, fiats have risk because all fiats are valued based on another fiat. There's no inherent value in it. It's just based on what it can be exchanged for, uh, either a good or another currency. Oh, yes. Thank you for that that explanation. I think a lot of people needed that education as far as how uh, fiat works, how stable coins work. And now, like I stated before, in Switzerland, we have stable coins available at places like McDonald's. So it's great to see the progress from when you yeah. first co-founded Tether when stable coins first hit the market. So great to see that there. 
And uh, one last question for you here, William. What do you think the future of stable coins will be in the broader crypto market, uh, even with the issuance of CBDCs coming? Yeah, I'd say uh, a couple of years ago, I really wondered if once central bank digital currencies were, were created and issued, whether they would uh, uh, ultimately crowd out the, the role for privately issued stable coins. But since uh, Chairman Powell at the U.S. Federal Reserve has recently said that uh, in the coming years, his quote, in the coming years, we will examine how the U.S. is going to issue a stable coin. I'd say it's going to be a long time before you have central bank digital currencies around the world. And in the meantime, uh, privately issued stable coins will be the norm. And more than likely, I think they will coexist. And one reason for them to coexist is that once governments get involved in something and do something, the rate of innovation around the thing they do drops a lot because there's really not a market incentive for them to change what they have. Privately issued stable coins are always competing with other privately issued stable coins. So they have to be competitive and offer new features. And so what my hope is, but also I think the most practical reality of the future is you have privately issued stable coins, some backed by crypto, some backed by other fiats that do certain things better than the central bank digital currencies. Uh, it may even be that they, uh, they reconcile faster on chain. It could be that they're cheaper to use. Uh, I don't know, but there will be differences. And it does not seem like uh, the regulators want to stamp out privately issued stablecoins, though they may want to better understand the collateral behind them. And so they'll coexist is, is what, I'm, what I'm predicting.